In this video, I'm going to look at trig and hyperbolic substitutions. You will get the greatest benefit from this video if you pause the video when I say so and try to do each integral for yourself. It means that this will then last perhaps some little while, but you will get a much better understanding than just sitting there like a sponge and trying to soak it all up. Well, the first one is this. Find the integral of 1 over root 4 plus x squared dx. And this is where I would like you to pause the video and see if you can find this out for yourself. So pause the video, please. Well, did you manage this? If you tried a substitution like u equals 4 plus x squared, you will have soon found that that became very unpleasant. We need another way of making the expression under the square root sign a nice, perfect square. If you think of your formulae, trig formulae and hyperbolic formulae, then the formula that is going to be helpful is perhaps 1 plus shine squared u. One plus shine squared u is cosh squared u. If we multiply through by four, we get four plus four shine squared is four cosh squared. If we had four cosh squared there, that would be nice. So this suggests that we use the substitution x equals two shine u. This is where I think you should pause again and see if you can do it now. Well, here's the correct solution. Using 2 shine u, dx is going to be 2 cos u. So instead of dx, we write 2 cos u du. 4 plus 4 shine squared. The whole purpose of doing it is 4 cos squared. Square root and everything cancels. You get u plus c. You get r shine x over 2. r shine x over 2 plus c. Okay, next one. See what you can do with that. Pause the video and find the integral for yourself. This time, if you tried x equals 2 shine u, you might well have got there, but it gets to be a little bit less pleasant. In this case, what I look at is the fact that I have x cubed, an odd power of x. And if I've got an odd power of x and the square root of something like 4 plus x squared, then I go back to the substitution u equals 4 plus x squared. And here is the solution for you, in case you didn't manage it. u is 4 plus x squared, du is 2x dx, so dx is du divided by 2x. Put all that in, leave the x cubed because you can see that an x is going to cancel, leaving you with x squared on the top. x squared is u minus 4 over root u. That's now a nice simple little integral to do. And then you substitute back in again. If you prefer using u squared equals 4 plus x squared instead of u, that's fine. There is no real difference between the two. If you can do it with u, equals 4 plus x squared, you can do it with u squared it is 4 plus x squared. Let's have a look at the next one. Okay, pause the video again and see if you can do this one for yourself. In this one, we don't have a square root to worry about, but we still have an awkward expression on the denominator. It's possible you might have tried u equals 4 plus x squared. Then you would have got yourself into a fairly awkward mess. So we want another way of sorting out what's on the bottom. In view of the first one we did, you might have tried x equals 2 shine u. There's another formula that you could use. Instead of using 1 plus shine squared is cosh squared, perhaps you might think of using 1 plus 
tan squared is sec squared. If you didn't try that, just pause the video again now and have a go using a substitution which depends on this. 1 plus tan squared is sec squared. Once again, I've done it for you. If we start with the idea that 1 plus tan squared is sec squared and multiply by 4, we get 4 plus 4 tan squared is 4 sec squared. And so if we put x equal to 2 tan u, the bottom will become 4 plus 4 tan squared. So x is 2 tan u, dx is 2 sec squared u du. So instead of dx, we write 2 sec squared u du. The bottom is 4 plus 4 tan squared, which is 4 sec squared. The sec squared disappears. 2 over 4 is a half. Integral of a half. And u is arctan x divided by 2. So when I've got no square root on the bottom, I think it's usually better to use tan rather than shine. If I had a square root, I would use shine. Okay, let's look at the next one. This should be now a little bit of a familiar idea. We're looking for a formula which will help us with the square root sign. Okay, pause the video and find the integral for yourself. With what we've done so far, you might have thought perhaps of sec squared u minus 1 is tan squared. Or you might have thought of cosh squared u minus 1 is shine squared. I said just now that when we had no square root sign, the best one to use was tan. When you've got a square root sign, it's better to use shine and cosh. They both have similar formulae. They'll both get you out of the same sort of problem. But when there's a square root, hyperbolic functions. When there's no square root, like the previous one, x squared plus 4, use tan. OK, so if you didn't think of doing that, Try using this second identity, cosh squared u minus 1 equals shine squared, and see if you can get it out now. So pause the video if you need to have another go. OK, here's the solution. Using cosh squared minus 1, let's multiply by 9. We get 9 cosh squared minus 9 is 9 shine squared. So if I put x equal to 3 cosh u, I will get 9 cosh squared. That's a nice square root. dx is equal to 3 shine u du. dx is 3 shine u du. The bottom is 9 cosh squared u minus 1. The whole purpose of doing it is that is 9 shine squared. Now everything cancels when you take the square root. Integrate, you get u. u is r cosh x divided by 3 plus c. OK, moving on again. I suppose the question you might ask here is, do we use u is 1 minus x squared, or u squared? Or do we use x equals sine u? OK, pause the video for yourself and see if you can do this little problem. The guidelines that I use here are that I have root 1 minus x squared. I have an even power 2 on the x squared, which is outside the square root sign. 
If I've got an even power there, then I use sine, or if it was 1 plus x squared, I would use shine, etc. So if I've got a square root sign, I use the trigonometric form or the hyperbolic form if I have an even power of x outside. So going ahead with that, x is sine u, which I suspect many of you tried. dx is cos u du. Putting all that in, we should have got sine squared is x squared, root 1 minus sine squared times cos. Now we get the integral of sine squared u cos squared u du. You might have got that far and successfully continued, or you might have got this far and got stuck, or you might just not have got this far. What I would like you to do now is have another pause of the video and see if you can cope with this integral. I hope you saw the double angle formula coming in here. Sine 2u is 2 sine u cos u, so sine u cos u is a half of that. Square it, you get a quarter sine squared. There's only one way to integrate sine squared, that is the double angle formula, a half 1 minus cos 4u. Comes from cos 4u is 1 minus 2 sine squared 2u. This now integrates quite easily. Take the half out, you get an eighth u minus a quarter sine 4u. Well, we had that x was sine u, and therefore u is arc sine x. So it is actually correct to write sine 4 arc sine x. But I just think that looks very unpleasant. I don't really know what it means. I certainly would have trouble drawing the graph. And I think we should be able to express this rather more easily in terms of x. So the challenge now is what can you do with sine for you, rewriting it in terms of x without writing something like this, sine for arc sine x. I want to avoid that. So pause again and see if you can cope with sine for u. How are you going to rewrite that? We started with the substitution x equals sine u, and 1 minus sine squared is 1 minus x squared is cos. So I can easily cope with sine 1 u and cos 1 u in terms of x. Sine for u, if I bring that down with the double angle formula to 2, sine 2u cos 2u. We're part way towards sine of 1u and cos 1u. Going further, sine 2u is 2 sine u cos u, giving us 4. Cos 2u is, well, 1 minus 2 sine squared u is the most sensible form to use here. We have 4. x is sine u. Cos u is root 1 minus x squared. And sine u is x. So here we have what I would say is a much simpler way of writing sine for u in terms of x. Put that back up in here, and you have 1 over 8 arc sine x minus 1 over 8 times this lot plus c. Still looks a little bit complicated, but I think it's preferable to using sine for arc sine x. Let's see if we can find another one. Once again, I'd like you to pause the video and see if you can work this one out for yourself. I have given you various hints along the way. We have a square root sign again. We've got root 1 minus x squared. And that prompts me to look at the power of x outside. We did one like this just now. The power of x was 2, which was even. The power of x now is odd. And in this case, I would use the substitution u is 1 minus x squared, or if you prefer it, u squared is 1 minus x squared. So if you didn't do something like that, I suggest you pause again and have another go.
Well, with the odd power, we use u is 1 minus x squared or u squared is 1 minus x squared. You can use sine x, but the chances are that you'll end up with something rather more awkward. This time I thought I would use u squared rather than u, just to show you there's not really much difference. Differentiating 2u du is minus 2x dx, which gives us that dx is minus u over x du. So dx is minus u over x du. We can see there's an x which is going to cancel, which is why, with an odd power, this is a good technique. So we're going to cancel, and x squared is 1 minus u squared. 1 minus x squared under the square root sign is u squared, and u du and the minus. That simplifies quite happily to u times u times u squared is u to the 4, and that's plus, minus u squared, integrate, and this is just easy to substitute back again. This table summarizes what we've just been doing. If your integral involves the square root of a squared minus x squared, whether it's on the numerator or denominator, and if it also includes x to the n, where n is even, and that includes 0, then you should use x equals a sine u a squared plus x squared, same conditions, shine u, and because of the square root, a shine u is better than a tan u. x squared minus a squared, root again, same conditions, and again, cos u, a cos u is better than a sec u. 1 over x squared plus a squared, no square root sign, now we use the tan. So that's a brief summary of what's going on and what I feel are the best substitutions you could use. If n is odd, you've got a square root sign and x to the odd power outside it, then u or u squared equals whatever you've got under the square root sign. There are other substitutions which you can use, but I think on the whole, if you use a different substitution, the consequent algebra might well be more awkward. Well, this video might have taken you a little while, particularly if you worked properly at the questions. You will find everything, of course, summarized in the notes.